This is what at first when I was trying to hold the car, yeah. I didn't see them crying. They were just they were just looking at me, and I could just see their eyes, like you know, looking at me like what's going on. And then the second I had went under the car, that's when I had heard my daughters crying, and that's when I had told them take my daughters out. And then he asked me, what do you want me to do? I was like, take my daughters out. And then when he took my daughters out, I told him to throw the car into reverse because my arm was over my head. So when he reversed it, I had enough time to just take my arm out so I could be like that instead of having my arms over my head. Because that was like the pressure of my arm on my head and the car. But my daughters didn't start crying until after they didn't see me. I think once they felt the car, you know, mm -hmm. hit something, I think they figured it out like... I didn't think it was gonna. My car was gonna start rolling. When I went to go lock my front door, I looked, and I started seeing the car rolling forward. So I go in front of the car to try to hold it. And I held it as much as I could, and then that's when I seen the neighbor come, and I was like, "Yo, I can't hold it anymore. I'm just gonna have to slow it down and use myself." You know what I mean? Yeah. And I did. That's what I did. I slowed it down enough for him to get into the car. And try, like I wanted to really push the car, but I knew with me being as small as I am, yeah. the front wheel once they touched the steep of the, uh, once they got onto the drive on um, the steep hill that the car was gonna go faster. And once the back ones were to get on it, that would've went like that. So I tried to hold as much for the back wheel not to get to that steep hill. And that's when, when the back wheel had finally got to it, that's when the car started, the, the weight of the car got more on me. Like I could feel the weight of the car more. And that's when I had to do what I did, but it slowed down the car enough because the neighbor did get to jump in. Right. And at that moment, I felt like I couldn't breathe anyways and I didn't want to hyperventilate under the car. So I was just trying to keep calm as much as I could. I remember the firemen coming to talk to me, two of them. I remember the neighbor, the girl neighbor, had to come under the car to come talk to me and try to get me to keep talking. And I just told her, I was like, I can't. I just, I just the, you know what I mean? I just worried about my kids. They, yeah. She took the kids out. She told me the kids were safe in the house. And that's when I kind of just stopped talking to her. Like, I just stay quiet and yeah. try to stay calm under the car. I wasn't they, did, they didn't know. They told The doctors told me that it was a 60 to 40% that I was going to feel. Okay. But when I had woken up and they had touched the bottom of my legs, I did feel so my nerves are still intact, which okay. is good. That's why they're saying that I will be able to walk one day. Okay. But the percentages were 60 against me and 40. It was 60 and 40.